Do you use food delivery apps? What do you mean? Like Uber Eats, Grubhub, et cetera? Uh, yeah, of course. I'm a lazy shithead, yeah. Right, yeah, you're a millennial. Uh, have who, you ever- Who likes to spend money unnecessarily? <laughs> yeah. Have you logged on and seen like weird sounding restaurants that you've never seen in person before that have like strange names that look like they were just kind of created by like an AI chat GPT <laughs> type of thing? Do you know what I'm talking about? I mean, yeah, I just figured that that was just a restaurant I've never heard of that, you know, was new in town. No, no, no. <laughs> what do you mean? I got obsessed and I kind of deep dived into what's called ghost kitchens. Have you heard of ghost kitchens? Well, yeah, have you ever heard the, ever heard the term? Heard the term. So yeah. like Mr. Beast did it with Beast Burger. Okay. So they're not real restaurants. They operate out of like existing restaurants or like trailers or just random fucking places, but it's becoming like an epidemic. It's getting out of hand. How does it actually work? So you basically can start a restaurant, but it can be like anything. It's stupid. Like there's examples where one location can have like 40 restaurants within that same restaurant. They can have some of the same uh, items even, and they operate like just through these like weird little places that aren't actually restaurants that don't look like restaurants. So let me tell you how I like became to do it. I saw um, Noah Schnapp from Stranger Things. He plays Will Byers, the main. So <laughs> okay. he, he's getting into the game. <laughs> of the, what do you mean? Is he, like he just owns a, a brand that is. Tender Fix by Noah Schnapp popped wow. up on my Uber Eats. Wow. And, I, and the marketing was good. The pictures look pretty good. I was like, let me check this shit out. I ordered it. It was very average. It was mid. Dare I say mid. <laughs> I look it up. Come to find out. Tender Fix by Noah Schnapp are run out of IHOPs. No. The fucking IHOP. So that's how IHOP's surviving right picks now? Picks up these restaurants. Bro, there's places like- They're slanging Will Byers food. Yes, bro. And they can make extra money from it. They use his likeness to get like more sales. It's crazy, bro. Like, well, How did you find that out that it was an IHOP? I deep dove into ghost kitchens. And that's why I know everything like a, about- Is this a subreddit or something? Like, Is this publicly available? I, I have watched a YouTube video. I read a couple articles. It's, it's like serious and how like fake these restaurants are. It's weird. They can like dodge like health inspections in weird ways because they're not real restaurants. And Whoa. one restaurant can get like 40 places on your Uber Eats screen. Imagine being like a mom and pop restaurant trying to compete with that. You know what I mean? There's Chili's has like ghost restaurants. So what kind of food did he have? Tenders. Tender fix. It's called tender fix. Oh, so like tender. Chicken, <laughs> I'm over tender here thinking fix. tender. Oh, no, not Tinder fix. No, yeah. <laughs> I was like, so look, I didn't know if it was like his ploy to get you to order his food while like on a Tinder date. Uh, literally, this that's kid's like 18 years old. I don't man. know. <laughs> well, that's that's legal. So I've seen like Super Mega Dilla where they just do like quesadillas. I think that's run out of like a fucking Applebee's. So is this just um, a marketing ploy at this point? Cosmic Wings um, is run out of an Applebee's. Pasquale's pizza and wings are run out of Chucky fucking cheese, bro. I shit you not. It's just a new way. There's these virtual dining tech startup companies that are coming in and making, and just basically taking advantage of the order delivery apps by buying up all the real estate, by having an insane number of restaurants show up that it's like, that are all saying they're like within 0.5 miles of you. They put them anywhere. And they have this, some of the same items that ran out of fucking existing restaurants. Wow. And in, yeah, Mr. Beast, I think opened a door here. He, or he knew that this was happening. I don't know. That guy continues to prove to be a genius. So you and I could create a one more time. Like restaurant. menu or restaurant. Serve it out of here. Out of IHOP. Out of IHOP, sure. Anyone that wants to <laughs> out of an up. Applebee's, yeah, Denny's, I think, is doing it, which, which okay. is just crazy. Is, is that who we should hit up? Maybe. I don't. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I would not respect myself, but God. like, it's the new like frontier of this virtual dining shit, bro. I don't think it's good for the consumer, man. I'm gonna have to look into this. You should, man. Ghost kitchens. Ghost Beware. Kitchens. I'm calling wow. it early in April of 2023. Ghost kitchens are gonna be an issue. 
by the end of this year. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Never did I think so. we'd talk about ghost kitchens. There it is. So yeah, but, that's my spiel for yeah, today. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I went to the wedding <laughs> yep. last weekend. Lesbian wedding. Yep. Yep. Hashtag lesbian wedding 2020. Exactly the same as a normal wedding. <laughs> Just yeah, like, like we, we thought. thought. <laughs> yeah. Really no real difference besides like a few title changes, you know, like sure. best you know, man was best dude for one. And like, it was just kind best of, dude. It was, yeah, it was kind of corny, but it was, was it there. Was an awesome. I pronou- I now pronounce you just wife and wife. Yeah. Just, you know, bride and bride, just yeah. the bride and bride, you know, yeah. it's just simple, really simple shit. Yeah. No earth shattering, uh, differences be- between a heterosexual <laughs> and this lesbian wedding. Good so, to know. Good to know. But what I was thinking about is I asked my wife, Hey, you know, we're going to this wedding this weekend and my hair was getting kind of long. I was like, you know, should I get a haircut? And she was quickly just like, yes, fuck yeah, cut your stupid long fucking hair. <laughs> it is mighty short now. Yeah, it's, it's high and tight right now. High and tight. So I started thinking about, man, when I went to get a haircut pretty much like the day before we're leaving town for a wedding, a public event where I'm going to have to meet people I've never met before. I and, just got nervous and, for you. And take pictures. <laughs> I was like... I fucking rolled the dice, dude. Well, you don't have like a go-to? You don't have a regular? So here's the thing about my go-to, right? I go to a a sweet little place called Little Scissors. Little Scissors. (laughs) Run by some very friendly Asian women. Okay. But there's about six of them in the place, right? And some people are very particular about, okay, I'm only going to Sophia or I'm only going to Lee or I'm only going to, you, you know just want to I mean? get in and out. You'll take any, whoever the fuck is open. You need a gal. Sit me down. You need to have a gal. I think if you want that confidence level to go up. <laughs> yeah. Well, once again, day before the wedding, Henry, I didn't have yeah. the luxury of time. Right. So I'm getting in and getting out. And thankfully, I mean, I look amazing. If I must say so myself, but, you know, but I just was like, man, haircuts, there's a reason why people do have like their go-to barbers For and, sure. and their go-to people. I mean, it is rough out there, man. If you get a bad haircut, it's over. Your shit is fucked for a week borderline. I mean, you're not, you got to figure out like a, sh- a cool, shorter hair haircut. You either have to get way more haircuts than you actually need to be paying for, AKA for you're, sure. you're barely getting them cut. Yeah. Or you're going, you know, pretty substantial. Have you ever had a fixed cut? You ever gone in and been like, look, this other place fucked it up. I need you to make this better. Oh, that's, done my, that. that's my wife. Really? She's fixed my hair. Yeah. And she's not even obviously, you know, trained <laughs> or anything to do this. She has no qualifications to fix my hair. She could see that it was fucked up. But basically what, so what I've done in those circumstances, and you might, you know, attest to this is that if you get a fucked up haircut, Honestly, probably any any race, but I just thought it was applicable to white people because that's my experience. You're just buzzing it at that point. Just buzz it. Can't go wrong. That's the fix. Is yeah. that oh you you fucked up my trim? Like I'm gonna have you're forcing me into a buzz now. It's the only way to like keep it even. Yeah, and to not fuck it up again. Right. And anyone can do a buzz. Yeah. Yeah. I used to have barbers for sure. Like I needed my guy or my gal like pulling up to me. Even that used to be tight. But um, you know, I'm pretty big into hats. So like I, I have a, is a that level to cover of, the hair. It's just a bonus. It's a nice bonus yeah. of, 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 you know, if I do get a bad haircut, well, I'm wearing a hat out for every, a week, every day for, for a, a month, like yeah. whatever it takes. So I have a little less stress so I can go to like a great clips yeah, or something like that, you know, and not have that level of anxiety that I just got from you telling that story. Yeah, man, it was, I just, I didn't realize what I was doing Yeah, until I, Thank God walked out of there unscathed. And I was like, wow, I really dodged a fucking bullet here. But because you're in some wedding photos and shit. Oh, of course. Yeah. 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 I mean, this is like my best, you know, best friend, you know, family friend. My sister was the matron of honor. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, my best friend is the bride's brother or one of the bride's brothers. Mm -hmm. Lesbian wedding. You know, right. (laughs) It happens. Yeah. Um, Anyway, so for this episode, we wanted to, we've just been dissecting the rise to fame of our friend Ice Spice. This is Ice. Isis. This is Gaston. Yeah, Isis Gaston. Yeah. So for those that aren't familiar, the Ice came from short version of Isis, which is her government. Yep. And she's been public about this. We're not that creepy. Um it's and, on Wikipedia. And she just she just picked Ice Spice as her like social media handle. Yeah, way thought back. It was, yeah, thought it was cute, whatever, like before she even started rapping type shit. How lucky is that, by the way? Like 
the name you pick in like high school just to be your online name happens yeah. to work out for you. Yeah. I mean, mine would have been Mr. McTizzle 22. <laughs> like that would be what I would be going by right now. So. I actually am going by my middle school. <laughs> Shout out to you. Name. So yeah, me and ice, you know, got a lot of like, yeah, but man, I mean, we just realized that, you know, we've covered her honestly a few times just in like short form content and she's impossible to miss. She's, she's just moment after moment Crushing after it. moment. I mean, you know, we talk about what makes an artist successful and in this day and age, it really is their ability to create moments, right? Like yeah. social media and then in real life moments for themselves. Right. Because who said music moments in an interview recently, that was a good one. Yeah, maybe Jason. Fuck maybe. Yes. Yeah. Music moments. Yeah. Music moments of just being in the right places with the right, it's just all about storyline, right? I mean, yeah. she's done a perfect job of having her story evolve with her. And I think the general consensus of what we, you know, wanted to talk about is really that she started off as someone who everyone thought would be in our face one day and poof into oblivion the next, right? And I'm not saying she's had this, you know, long career yet it's still a very short time that she's been relevant but it's already longer than people thought it's way longer than people thought and the the heights that she's reached and the the moments that she's been able to create is just fucking phenomenal so the question has now become why is it so perfect does that make you suspicious yeah and what are the i don't know that i dove into it much like did you see are there conspiracy theories about this obviously industry plant comes to mind Immediately, you know, um, does someone just, you know, a label or someone in power want to take someone who already maybe like she had been going viral on TikTok for doing essentially thirst traps um, and then wanted to which, start doing Which we're music. all here for. Sure. No, I'm not. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. I mean. But you got to, yeah, you got to wonder how so perfectly calculated everything is. I mean, like New York Times, you know, wrote about her before like they write about a lot of people it's kind of strange drake obviously caught wind of her uh pretty early um how are all these things lining up so perfectly i mean the term industry plant gets a lot of you know flack but there are degrees of that being true whether you think so or not like there are careers that were kind of set up to be successful before they even started. That is a real thing. Cause it's like a label who wants to capitalize off an artist could sit around and wait for an artist to make all the perfect moves or they could take someone who they see having potential to do it and just work them through the system. Yeah. But my biggest argument to the industry plant conversation, bro, is that if it was that easy to just line up all the perfect moves to create something like an ice spice right now, they would do it time and time again. I think they probably have tried. I think they, I think it fails. I think there's people that were set up to do that and maybe it didn't work. Yeah. Know? But, and so, but that's why I have such an issue with the term industry plant. Cause I think it's a fucking, I think it's, it's just kind a, of a toxic term. It's a bullshit term. It kind of is, but the theories behind it, I think have some truth. I do. In what sense? In that. Just that they're set up for, for greatness, bro. Like from the beginning. In comparison to those that have to earn it. Okay. I think some people have hidden advantages maybe by the powers that be. I think it's very possible. If you're, if I'm a label. But okay, let me ask you this. How do you think those people, these industry plants, how do you think they get to be chosen as an industry plant? <laughs> they get a letter from the Illuminati in the mail and- <laughs> They got to sign it in blood, my no, G. <laughs> no, because I mean, the reason I ask is that someone from said label would have had to see and discover the potential that was Isis Gaston. Yeah. To even want to make her this quote unquote industry plant. Yeah. I mean, because it's not fucking cheap. If you're paying oh, New yeah. York Times to do whatever they did, you're, you're allegedly paying Drake maybe to do whatever he did to co-sign her. I mean, which I don't even think he would, ex he doesn't need your fucking money. I think he maybe plant, wanted to sign her, you know, committee. <laughs> but, I think he might've wanted to sign her and then found out she was already signed because she was actually signed early and a lot of people didn't know that. Yeah. I just still think that it's like, look, prove that you have something to offer. Prove that you have something that fans are going to give a flying fuck about. 
Yeah. Well, and I feel like you're increasing your chances of maybe, you know, if there is this whole, you know, system of choosing who it is that we're deeming worthy of being an industry plant, they're not just fucking taking, like, they're not closing their eyes. And no, she had a thing. She took New York drill, which is popularized by, you know, the late pop smoke. And that is usually talking about very violent topics and made it just a thing about being a baddie and doing what she wants and, and doing, and not talking about those same themes, but taking that same soundscape and flipping it, which was a unique thing already. And Incredible. All, all, all power to her for that. Incredible. I, I think that was genius. You know what I Innovative mean? Innovative as fuck. For sure. She literally capitalized on what it is that's trending right now all across music, which is what? Drill music. And flipped it. And, and, made it her and own. she took also what was capital, or and she also took what was trending in rap music right now, which is bad bitch, the Nickies, the yeah. Cardies, the female rappers the, are trending, period. You know, the Meg the Stallion. The female rappers are killing it, man. Shout out to y'all. I'm, yeah. lo I'm loving it. I'm, honestly. I'm here for <laughs> it. I am. Absolutely. All my support. Yeah, because I mean, that's what I think was, once again, whether it was some genius A&R or marketing executive or just some fucking homie of hers that, you know, or in my mind, of course, the best case scenario is like, shout out to Isis Gaston coming up with this style of hers and being yeah. true to herself. I think she did come up with the style for sure. Yeah. I was telling you, I think yesterday about Virgil Abloh's theory of taking something that's already popular. And I think he called it like a 3% or something, just changing it a little bit and making it something that people already like, but putting your spin on it. So it's just different enough but it has a built-in fan base, you know, of people that already liked the original thing. Yeah. And I think for me, I'm still most impressed by her ability to have turned haters, doubters, people that were clowning the fuck out of her in the beginning, right? When she first came out um, to now, like she just has, has won their, you know, up, you know, she's basically won them over. She's got the right attitude about it for sure. Cause you know, Drake flew her out, they hung out, whatever. And then he like, I guess, unfollowed her the next day. And was they, that a, was that a thing? That was a real thing. Like oh, just wow. unfollowed her the next day. And they like pressed her on a radio show about it. And, and she was very, you know, like, yeah, I don't, I don't know why I did that. You know, it's all love, but yeah, I, I don't know. She could have very easily, you know, gone crazy with it and, and started something or taken it the wrong way. Or a lot of people make assumptions that turn out to not be true. And we just talking about that earlier too. So I think she has the right attitude for this shit, honestly. Like, yeah, I mean, she definitely seems built for this shit. Once again, yeah. I don't know her personally at all. I'm, I'm going completely off of just, you know, what I can see and like deduce from, you know, the internet shit that, that that's out there. But for me, yeah, I mean, whether it's like the interviews that she's done, um, she's dealt with some like real shitty crowds that haven't seemed to really phase her. Twitter blasted her for like the Houston performance that yeah. you know, no one was really moving or saying any of the words. But, you know, shit they do now. <laughs> yeah. Bro, Munch came out in August. Like, she's brand ass new. Yeah. Still. It's and, crazy. And I think, you know, we did the New York rapper draft. Yeah. Go check that shit out on TikTok. Our drafts go crazy. Yes. Um, so we did the New York rapper draft in the comments. Supporting Ice about, Spice. In, like, where's Ice Spice? Why isn't For she like in the top York 10? For like a New York goat? I like, come on. Yeah. Like, she's got one EP out of six <laughs> yeah. songs. But... What's funny is that I think you and I are even perfect examples, or at least I'll speak for myself. You, you can chime in. I think I'm a perfect example of someone who was literally looking at those comments like, this is a fucking joke. Like, you mean the, like the munch girl, and you this know? Was, we posted that before the and, EP was even out. Yeah. She had no music. Yeah. Yet. Yeah. And so I was just basically like, this is ridiculous. Like, you know, but they're ha, serious. ha ha Yeah, exactly. I was basically like, ha ha ha. Yeah. But then... Just like Joe Budden got caught singing the lyrics to Munch With on his the podcast. Zesty yeah. Attitude. Bro, I do it. Yeah. I'm not even fucking kidding. Guys do it. You, thought I, was, you thought I was feeling you. <laughs> yeah. You thought I, you gotta do like the yeah, you thought I was feeling little you. <laughs> lip smack. And yeah. Shit. Even the uh even the Breakfast Club interview, I think, when um she or it wasn't Breakfast Club, who was it? Um she did some radio interview where they were like asking her about the title of the album and it's like you have to like roll your eyes. It's called like, you know, it's not just called like, it's called like, <laughs> Oh wow. Yeah. That's, that's, okay. That's the album, the EP. That's yeah. That's what it's called. Yeah, man. Because you know, like I said, shout out to her creating these moments. I mean, first and foremost, I think the one that really sent her into like the next stratosphere was obviously Munch. Right. I mean, that was just such a controversial, you know, she created that word. She literally created the word. That's amazing. If you create an urban dictionary word that ends up being completely viral as fuck, like, 
You're doing fuck s- Urban Dictionary. That's a word in that's an English it, word now. Is it, Every, in we- is, gonna, it, is it in Webster? It will be. <laughs> it's no it's, one's gonna stop using it anytime soon. It's making next year's submissions. Maybe in, maybe a couple years. Twenty 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 five. We'll, we'll see. Yeah, okay. I, I would say that's a yeah, good bet. yeah for sure. Yeah. But yeah, so I mean, you know, starting off with that, which obviously she had been putting out a few things before that, obviously on social media that were catching buzzes, but that was like the big first one that like cemented her even into the conversation. Yep. Then she goes and does you know the pink. Pantheress, yep. uh, you know, Boys a Liar remix, yep. right? Part two. Yeah. Then she does the whole thing with the SpongeBob flip on the bikini bottom track. You know, we talked about that because then she plays into this whole like she had a crush on SpongeBob. Like, right. She's just creating all these moments. Then you got her and Nikki twerking their freaking asses off in front of the camera, breaking the internet. And you know, the uh, Princess Diana video. E- exactly. And doing the Princess Diana remix, you know, with Nikki, announcing the fact that they have a partnership business wise. I mean, the Drake thing of people thinking she's dating Drake because they're at OVO fest together, chilling or whatever. I mean, she's just crushing it, done an amazing job. I think that what I'm worried about for her is that she's done so many things so, uh, quickly that have been so massive. Right. And so like breaking the internet, uh, you know, wise, right. That I'm fearful. It's going to be tough. I mean, we said that six months ago too. You're right. So it's like, if she just keeps going and keeps going, I don't know, man. She's, this is how Cardi B started. She was the Bronx, you know, girl rapper at the time. And people were like, she's trash. She's not going to stay. And she's fucking Cardi B now. Like, so let me ask you this. Do you think she'll be in the conversation for one of the agreement, the, one of the greatest female rappers of all time? I'd say it's much too early to say. Okay. Much too early to say. I'm personally, her music's not even for me. I, I love what she's doing. I hope she is successful and love it. And, you know, keep doing you, Ice. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's it's not for me. So it's, it, but just in the GOAT conversation, you know, or at least even in her niche, yeah, I'd say she need a lot more than like a, some singles and a six song EP. Yeah, let's see what the debut album's talking about, you know? Yeah, damn. I guess we're still judging people by albums, huh? Dude, Munch came out in August of 2022. Yeah. Doesn't it seem like longer? She's Not even been, a year. She's been just in our faces for so long. She's it a baby. like forever. That's she's insane. brand new to this shit, man. Well, we'll be paying attention though. Yeah, I can't wait to see what Ice Spice does. Yeah. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe if you fuck with this episode. We are dropping these internal podcasts every week. And until next week, Henry, what are we doing? Getting out of here. Getting the fuck out of here. Peace. Peace, y'all. Party shit like one more time. Party one more time. Party shit like one more time.